if things were to change yeah. back in Ghana, mm. let's say all the logistics are there, we have the standard of UGMC across all regions, like things are better. Would you want to go back home to work? If I if I will get more than the money I'm getting now, why not? More. Yeah. If the same. Same. Yeah. No. You, you <laughs> why? Sure. <laughs> Guys. Hello guys, welcome to another episode on your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. This is the FNF Catchy Dialogues. It's Francis again on your screens and uh, it's me, Fifi. And um, I think today's conversation is just going to be about us, really. Yeah, about us, uh, yeah. Enough of gossiping about people. <laughs> and... Um, We've had quite a number of people reach out to us backstage yeah. asking us to share our experiences about how, oh, yeah. you know, the nursing practices yeah. in the UK compared to... Yeah, I think it's yeah. very necessary that we tell others about how the transition has been working and also to compare how different is working in Ghana from working in the UK. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think... I, I'm, I'm not sure we'll be able to exhaust everything no. in, in this particular video, no. but we'll probably in another video talk about how we transition from clinical to yeah. non-clinical yeah. So, stuff. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Working on the wards and working, working away in the from specialty. The yeah. yeah, great. Cool. That yeah. should be all right. So guys, before we get into it, please do well to subscribe. Just click on that. Yes. And click on the bell icon. So as soon as we get... Um, we drop content you'd be able to watch it you'd be the first to get it yeah and then served hot hot fresh and nice so mm -hmm. now i'm going to ask you yeah okay go ahead comparing the practice in ghana to the uk what has the experience been for you well i would say nursing is nursing everywhere the only difference, the major difference, I'll say, is technology and logistics. Yeah. And the education here they give to nurses, some some of them use our, our books, the Ross and Wilson for is it anatomy. Anatomy and It's the same we use back home. But when you watch the nursing education, it's not as very as rigorous as the one we have back in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then working in Ghana, I can say that most of our hospital are subpar or just i'll just use that <laughs> word because we've only got a few standard hospitals yeah. and there's lots of pressure on those hospitals very few logistics there are facilities that don't even have cotton don't have spirit so it becomes very difficult and then we do more of abstract learning you are, you are supposed to improvise everything yeah and that's compromise quality I would say, yeah. So that's the biggest difference: logistics and technology. Here, where there's lots of research going on, there's research every day. There's there's research going on in Ghana, but not as compared to yeah here. Everything everything here should be evidence based. Exactly. I think most of the things we learn back in Ghana is a cake. <laughs> there's no revision. To be honest, yeah. So it's it's been a great pleasure working in Ghana. We've worked with some very nice people. We learned a lot, the basic skills. So here, here, if you're a student, you can't do cannulation. Back in Ghana, we yeah. learned cannulation. Of course. We, we, we did lots of things yeah, when we were, when we were in first IV year or second year. Loads but of here, stuff. you can't do it. You have to go through competencies. Yeah. That's the most annoying thing. It took me a year before I could cannulate a patient, before I could take uh, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it took me less. Took you have to less. go through training, mandatory training, sign yeah. competencies before you can even give normal saline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean... You see. Yeah. And I, I think that these things are necessary, I think. They are very necessary. Because you're coming in from a different country. Mm -hmm 
fine the the principles of nursing i feel are universal yes. but there are dynamics to how it's practiced yes. so coming back from a different i mean from a different background yeah. coming into the uk yeah you should definitely expect some change yeah so and there are let's, loads of changes let's let's go let's go let's uh, deal with it on this tangent so let's talk about logistics we talk about leadership like yeah. nursing leadership here and how staff relate to their their leaders let's talk about career progression that's three things right okay so let's start and we can add more so talking about logistics for logistics it's a no-brainer yeah we we are nowhere close. <laughs> no 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 there's abundance of everything yeah abundance of everything and they are colonial masters so we can't we we don't expect to be at the same level but we are not trying the money we waste on unnecessary things in ghana to be honest let's let's face the point the money we waste on unnecessary things in ghana i went to this community when i was working with gna yeah that ngo you remember yeah and then there was this community health nurse do you know she has to use her own money to buy gloves to buy cotton and she has to walk miles to be able to visit the schools and the homes of the clients she has to see there was no motorcycle there was nothing and you receive the same salary as someone who goes to work with excess stuff and she has to do nothing so it's... there's no standard like that's i don't know i don't know yeah Wait, there's, it there's feels a, there's, like everything is just organized even in the of. big hospitals yeah even in the big hospital apart from the hospital we worked in yeah that showed a bit because it was new it was new so you could expect that yeah things are on a bit of a high tech level mm. apart from that there are big hospitals that recently on the news the what 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 doctors are going on strike because private contractors are demolishing their bungalows can you imagine there's no lay down structure for anything the big hospitals i went to one very big hospital when i was in ghana took my client was um a dialysis patient for referral when there and in their a and e the a and e here can get stuck like so many patients but then systems are in place you wouldn't see <laughs> i wouldn't want to continue i wouldn't want to continue you know the story you know how it is in ghana but for here it's it's great it's great to work in here there's lots of pressure but you get the things to work with so even under excess pressure you still have that freedom to be able to use the things you want to be able to provide the care absolutely yeah. you don't yeah. need to improvise they they don't want you to improvise with anything otherwise you compromise on patient care and then at the end you you're unable to provide the best of your service yeah i, I think the standards for patient safety is very high here yeah. Yeah, yeah they they are committed to making sure that you are delivering the right care yeah. at the right time at the highest standard mm. possible so i one thing we we tend to downplay a lot is the transition period when you come in fresh from another country mm. be it from nigeria india ghana yeah. pakistan nepal all yeah. over the world as soon as you come in you you first obviously you've got your oski to complete yeah. and then as soon as you're done with that now you get straight onto the ward excuse me guys yeah. and then that is where the real deal starts like yeah. i remember my first shift mm -hmm. i was like what is it, going on <laughs> it felt like i had never practiced, practiced nursing in my life yeah but do you know once you get on top of things you you tend to adjust quickly very quickly yeah. and i think we are that good we it, are that good exactly when coming and from ghana all, nigeria all across Af africa when we come here we yeah we, we, do we our really best do here. excel we work, and, yeah. and i think it's all down to the transition because yeah. you won't be left alone to just they no. won't throw you into the wild yeah. you would have supernumerary periods yeah. where you'd have to um you'd get to work with mentors yes. or existing staff on the yeah. ward to literally hold your hand show you around 
you have to learn but protocols. Don't we have that in Ghana? We we do it, but it's not structured like we have it here. Exactly. Because when you're a rotation there, obviously you are guided to know what to do. Though you've you've done lots of clinicals, they expect that you know basic things, but they still don't leave you to be on your own. Unless, of course, they are very confident in you. But here, irrespective of the confidence they've got in you, you still have to go through that mentorship. And I think it is something that needs to be emulated back yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Like, we need to have a proper structure for transition. Because, yes. yeah. fine, you've done rotation, you've been on placements throughout your nursing schooling, yeah. but you still need because different hospitals practice different things even yes. back in ghana yeah that's true so you definitely need mentors and one thing i appreciate so much about the uk is the practice educators and yes. practice development nurses Very like great. they 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 before you come in f- from where i worked before i went there there was a pack waiting for me yes. showing me the protocols the yeah. things i need to know yeah. blah 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 yeah it's a whole lot being thrown at you at once yeah but that time will pass that period where you feel like there's a lot of pressure yeah. will eventually pass and then before you realize you you finally found your feet after supernumerary someone shows you around yeah. but they still don't leave you alone no because mind you at some point your pin will not yet be in so you can't yeah. even and like you rightly <laughs> mentioned you still have competencies things do. you were doing back yeah. in ghana things yeah, you're doing true. in nigeria india that you feel because i've had colleagues who came in with me who have been practicing for 10 years 11 years 12 years but as soon as you set foot here everything you know forget it yeah until you start getting your competencies ticked off yeah then you know that yeah Yeah. Yeah. so i think in terms of support and um transitioning and you know inducting people in we that there is something Ghana, Africa, all the other countries probably should, could we learn, should, we should from, learn from, from the UK. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about the leadership, leadership, the staffness with the se- the senior staffness, the nursing officer, the is it piano? Yeah, and then the the DDNS. How how's the relationship? <laughs> Do you know yeah. why I'm laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing is when I got to know. That you need to address everyone by their first, first name. names. Like crazy. Like crazy. Uh, you don't have to say sister. Y- you no. don't have to say and Mr. When, you don't And when you see your DDNS cover, you don't have to stand up. You don't need up. to stand up like Well. Just no but, one really cares. Like What do you think? Is it is it good that we still have to do it back in Ghana? This is And why is that so? I- this is an issue of culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's the cult- the culture difference. Don't you think it's it's like commanding respect instead of So I being, think being like, like I already it. said it's yeah. it's an issue of culture mm-hmm. because of the way things are done back home. Even in the community you you call your aunties, uncles and stuff like that. So I I feel yeah. like that For, for the name brought, calling, for yeah. the name giving the title and that showing that respect with regards to giving that sort of sister or ma or dad it's it's fine yeah but then standing up standing when up, you see your nurse in charge or standing a aside do you know the shock of my life the first shock of my life starting on the ward was when i saw a student sitting around the the nurse's station or yeah we we're waiting for a handover <laughs> that was my first day they spoke a lot i couldn't hear a word because it was so fast and I hadn't stayed here for a very long time so I couldn't grasp with the, the accent quickly but the nurse in charge came saw students sitting she had to go get her own chair from her office you don't tell someone to sit, stand up from her yeah. chair just because you're a nurse manager or you are a nursing officer or what no yeah there's mutual level of respect. Absolutely. You don't command respect. It's, that's, it's just, that's, that's the beauty. You, you know, don't need to command way, it. The way students, staff nurses, just a normal registered nurse talks to the manager is, is so nice, but there's no disrespect. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a it's, beautiful oh thing. It's, it's amazing how it works. You, you, you can talk to your manager. You can just knock your manager's office, enter, yeah. speak what's bothering you. If, if you've got issues, you can go talk about. In Ghana, you 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 don't see your matron. Like, <laughs> they, they are like demigods. 
Yeah, and I, I, you I, did I, say that. No, that's 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 the thing. Because when you see your your matron coming, when you see your piano come, you have to stand like Underline. stand, wait for them to. Bro, yeah, for no. the person to pass. And you, do you know the funny thing? <laughs> I actually did that when I got into the UK. When the when you they know, first showed me the know, matron, you know, I stood up. I was like, even even <laughs> after I had worked for a few months, when I see there are some that were red. I think I don't yeah. know if it's the the matrons and yeah. the. I'm tempted to stand up. Sometimes I'm I'm halfway off yeah. the chair. I realize no. Let me go and back down. See, my colleagues. Um, you, when I was on the, uh, I mean, when I was on the ward, my colleagues mm. wouldn't realize because they didn't know that's what we do. Yeah. But majority, oh god, I was just standing. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, one thing that's common with with all of them is that at least we all, we call them sisters as well. Yeah. So here they're also called sisters, junior yeah. sisters, and yeah. stuff like that. But so. you don't have to add the sister to the no, title. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, they are no, called. I mean, it's it's on the tag, sister. Yeah. Yeah, you call their name. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's just and so nice. Cool. But that respect is there. You know that this is a band six. You know that this a band seven. Your next manager this is a matron. Nobody tells you to respect. Nobody tells you to. You know, you see the person and you have to put things in order. Yeah. It's there. But that sort of standing up to show, it's, nah, I don't think it's, nah. yeah. Nah. It's, it's gotten a point to do with respect oh. in, in a way. I think okay. the, the last bit to talk about is career progression. Progression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how, how do you see it? So, like we we're really talking about things being structured. Yeah. When you come in mm -hmm. as a band five, yeah. now there are requirements that you need to meet. Mm -hmm. Not everything, but majority of it mm -hmm. before you can become a band six. Yeah. And when you are a band five, you have a competency book or something that takes you off all of those things. Yeah. So at a point, you will feel confident that now, because Band 6 has got more to do with um, being able to... Supervisory. Supervisory role, a bit of being man able to management, management yeah. my, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's, it's well-structured and it becomes... As and when you feel confident that you want to go for it. You, you go for it. Yeah. You don't have to wait for a number of years. No. Wait for how do we call it back in Ghana, where the one coffee is waiting for um, senior staff, and they're like you yeah, have no, to wait for. but you have to go for is it? It's not appraisal. There's another uh, thing they call um, promotion thing. interview and yeah, something like that. You do interviews here, but you can be banned five in the next six months if you feel appraisal. yeah, because there are people who have come from the uh, from our countries back home. They come here their level of seniority, their level of expertise back home. Once they get through the system for a few months, go through their competencies and all that, they just go. Some jump from band five to band seven. Yeah, straight. Once you feel confident for straight. it. Straight. Nobody says that, I've been here before you, so you have to wait and no. you have to get this level of... I've seen people that are, I'll say... Content less, being band less five. Less prescribers. Yeah. Apart from getting that prescriber cause bit checked, they they don't need to get a master's no no but in Ghana yeah you you, you you have to really learn to and one thing I've realized is that like you rightly mentioned people are not desperate to no. go up. people are comfortable with band five like they don't want additional oh I've, 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 I've seen people that they have don't remained band five so people get to band six and, and they're like I'm good I don't yeah. want to go again yeah. people want to get to nobody band forces eight. you no nobody forces no and you. I think here in the uk if you show if you're able to prove yeah that you can do it that is it that you that get is it. it that is it and yeah. you won't be left alone to say oh you said you can do no. it so do it no, they no. will still support yeah. you yeah. to be able to so i think career progression wise one thing i feel is with immigrants is that i don't know if it's fear or timidity it's it's but, the way we've, we've been brought up and we need way. to shake it off yeah but I wouldn't force anybody to push him or herself so hard. If you think you want to learn the um, along the way, being a band five for five years, just do that. Get your confidence. Once you are confident, you can go for it. Yeah. But don't be pressured because you see your mates being yeah, band going, eight and all that. No, no it's no. not for everyone. Absolutely, yeah. It's Pe not for everyone. Pe people don't know yeah. that. It's yeah. it's. It's not an easy. It's no, not it's, easy it's as not, you it's, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah it comes with loads of responsibilities. responsibilities There's yeah. a lot you have to do, but 
once once you think you are up for it you go for it back home i think there's a lot that needs to change absolutely there's a lot and, um, there's a lot that needs to change we 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 would we are not going to promise that we will be the agents of change but we will in our own way try to advocate we, for some of that's these the things. best we can do absolutely that's the best we can we do we would advocate because look at the opportunities we have now the jobs we're doing now yeah you 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 won't get in guys yes, you, and you don't yeah there are limited specialties i think exactly that, because i know people that have trained to be their orthopedic nurse experts and all that when i was working in our, our last hospital yeah. before we came to the uk mm. there was this lady she she was so good she had trained as a band specialist but there was no nursing specialty in that like a tissue viability nurse as yeah. we have here that will be will be created back home that they also guide people along the way that they train new nurses mm. who are interested in their role not necessarily going to school before you become a tissue bar viability yeah. nurse now yeah or I a diabetic that. specialist nurse i think we should create those roles with time I, i've heard that the nursing refugee council or the grnma I, i don't know what the name is but they've created these specialties where nurses could go through and become renowned nurses that but they are basic things that pain nurse yeah it's not going to pain nurse we have palliative nurses there are, there are so many things that we look we look down on yeah i think which the, are very necessary the, the 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 nursing practice is so the range of things you can do is so vast There's that we need to start advocating for some of there's these things to yeah, be considered back home yeah. in, in different countries because as as far as um, as much as possible we need to have a universal standard of practice where there are equal opportunities for nurses all over the world to be able to you know because some people are leaving their countries not because they really want to but because they have a passion for something that they would never get yes. if they decide to stay you back know, at home i i don't And think i don't think yeah. we we use i don't know if we use the uk curriculum for study back home or the american curriculum I think we should also find our own way based on our resources because we can learn things that we can practice. Yeah. Because we have limited logistics or the technical know-how. Let's go with what we can. Do you know we we learned there's one funny thing it's not related to what we are discussing but when we learned about shorter days, longer nights mm. and we didn't experience any of that back home. Here you have sunset coming at 4 p.m. Yeah. You can have daybreak coming at it's at 9 a.m. before yeah. you actually see the sun. Yeah. That is what we learn back home. There are things that we learn that were written by people in the US or the UK where they are experienced. That is what we learn. Why sh- why can't we develop something for ourselves that will suit us? And then with time we can advance. If I don't know. I don't know how to put it for you to yeah, understand. Yeah, I, I we, we learn some get, of these abstract things which we will never experience. We will yeah, never know. I, I completely understand what you you're see. saying, but like I mentioned, um, it, it's it's on all of us nurses all over the world to be able to advocate for some of these things to you know be implemented all over the world so that we can have some form of uniformity when it comes oh, to yeah. the opportunities for nurses all, Man, yeah. all over the world. We should we should go at our own pace and. There needs to be lots of reforms there needs to be lots of reforms that all stakeholders should come together and transform health system in ghana that's why most of the nurses are leaving it's not you complete school there are no jobs yeah and how do you expect someone to wait it's, you've it's, invested government has helped with tuition in nursing training college and university but people need to survive people need to eat yeah yeah looking at all those things you go to work and there are no logistics management is bringing hell i know a ddns that slapped one of our colleagues during clinical so you can't do that here no yet you, we, you, we you can't no you, can't. you see i think at, at the end of the day we just need to unite and make that deliberate effort to give nursing an uplift wherever yeah. we find ourselves and then yeah. try to you know yeah i think i think yeah. th- we, we've we've exhausted there's a lot there's of a lot to talk about loads of stuff we yeah. can talk about yeah. but um i think this has been an interesting topic to discuss yeah. and guys if you've got any 
follow up questions if you've got any comments you can put it in yeah. there we 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 would be proud to be able to you know start a new wind where we want to advocate for you know nursing practice and opportunities to be you know, the equalized. cry, the cry it's, it's, has been it's going a big on for, fight for a very long time but, um, there seems to be i don't know measures i don't i wouldn't say that the leaders are doing nothing they are trying their best but i think there's more that needs to be done there has the, to be lots of effort but one last question before we come to an end in the next few seconds if things were to change yeah. back in Ghana let's say all the logistics are there we have the standard of UGMC across all regions like things are better would you want to go back home to work if i if i will get more than the money i'm getting now why not more yeah if the same same yeah no you, you. <laughs> why sure <laughs> guys see you on the next episode an unpatriotic citizen <laughs> <laughs> See you. Yeah, Bye. thanks guys. <laughs>